wiped out 96% of complex life on Earth. So I argue that one volcano can ruin your whole day, but you've got to get a big one, and they come. And what happens is that they put aerosols into the atmosphere, but you've got water that operates as a coolant, and you heat that water. Now, imagine if you heat all that water under the sea. Well, these terrestrial ones here in the Arabian Gulf, you can see the basalts, bottom photograph. These are flood basalts that covered a huge amount of the surface. These are super volcanic provinces. In the past, they leaked out masses of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Where did it go? Why isn't the atmosphere full of carbon dioxide? It's very simple. Carbon dioxide doesn't stay in the atmosphere very long. And the real ones that we don't measure and that we don't see are the super volcanoes beneath the sea floor. We know they're there, and when they rise, you actually change sea level. You actually change the, the current flow in the ocean, so you can change climate. They don't pump out aerosols. Carbon dioxide bubbling out of these volcanoes gets dissolved in the bottom water, and later, thousands of years later, it will be upwelled to the surface. So if the oceans are pumping out more carbon dioxide today, it could be from something that happened thousands of years ago. We just don't know, and science is uncertain. And when we look at these, under sea, we see eruptions of lava, we see hot springs, the mid-ocean ridges are 64,000 kilometres long with big fissures of basalt coming out and we're cooling this basalt with circulating seawater, keeping that seawater alkaline but also cooling the rocks from 1,100 degrees Celsius to 2 degrees Celsius and we put that heat in the oceans. And one of the really strange events that we have recorded is that just before you get an El Nino event, where you heat ocean waters, there is a swarm of earthquakes. It may well be that submarine volcanic activity is heating up seawater. The earthquakes are because molten rock is rising. Now, you can measure the amount of old volcanoes on the sea floor, and it's not the miserable 20 that people are monitoring in the terrestrial environment. There's only 3.47 million of these volcanoes. So we have a huge source of carbon dioxide on the oceans. And we've had a surprise. In the Arctic Ocean, people were saying, oh, God, we're all going to die. It's warming up and the sea ice is retreating. But they didn't look in the geological literature. There was a significant sub-Arctic Ocean eruption in 1999. It put a lot of heat into the ocean but also it was explosive, driven by a huge amount of dissolved carbon dioxide. We don't monitor these. We only have to look at various different ways of deducing what happens. So I argue that what's out of sight is out of mind. Our warmest don't really worry about it. But let's just look at what happens before, during and after eruptions. We get hot springs. This is a favourite island of mine, the island of Milos. Left photograph. It's a gas vent. We've just had an explosive gas vent. Right photograph is a field of explosive gas vents. This is a wonderful place for teaching students. Here I am bathing in a carbon dioxide rich spring with students from Austria, teaching them about hot springs. On the right are precipitates of carbonate material, top right, and sinters, silica sinters that had a lot of carbonate in it. So we can go to any volcanic area and see that huge amounts of carbon dioxide come out. Left photograph is Pamukkale, a place that was well known by the Romans. These are calcium carbonate rocks, where we precipitated calcium carbonate out of springs. The two right ones are Travertine, also in Turkey, where we precipitated calcium carbonate out of springs. So carbon dioxide is with us everywhere. And on the ocean floor, what do we see? We see springs that bubble out carbon dioxide. And we find pools of liquid carbon dioxide on the ocean floor. And that, to me, has never been used by the IPCC. They've never looked at the complete carbon cycle. And we all know from warm springs on the left, uh, submarine springs, two top ones, that these actually precipitate um, sulphide-rich materials. The bottom one is a carbonate sulphide rock precipitated from hot springs only 1,685 million years ago. So all we're saying is the processes we see today, 
have been going on for thousands of millions of years, and carbon dioxide is a major component of hot spring precipitates. Here's some stuff from the Philippines. These are carbonates, precipitated at a hot spring precipitate. We see an evaporites, Death Valley here. These are carbonates on the floor of Death Valley, on the bottom right. One of these things which is thousands of millions of years old, it was a carbonate rock. So calcium carbonate and carbon dioxide has been with us for a very long period of time. And we keep pulling it out of the atmosphere by natural processes. And what I'm saying is don't fear a high carbon dioxide atmosphere. You'll get better crop yields and it will be pulled out of the atmosphere. Granites, very common rock type. They leak out huge amounts of carbon dioxide as they rise about 12 kilometres. That you can't measure. You can only deduce from experiments. And here we have carbonate volcanoes in East Africa. They leak out, melts, molten rocks of carbonate. Bottom uh, photograph is you can find these things with magnetics. The right ones are showing that carbonates have gone out of these and chemically reacted. So we have a huge amount of information in geology saying that we have grossly underestimated the carbon cycle. And we go back to the Arabian plate and we see the top, uh, the right two photographs. The top one has got bubbles in it. This is where gas has gone streaming through molten rock. And the bottom one is where those cavities have been filled by calcium carbonate, a gas-driven system. So again, I argue the IPCC has got it totally wrong. And we mentioned this before, but there is a relationship over time between volcanic activity and carbon dioxide. Surprise, surprise, we even leak out carbon dioxide out of earthquakes. And this is a very well-known earthquake from Iran in 1968. that was very well monitored, and carbon dioxide was bubbling out of it. Well, no surprise. You have many springs in many areas, especially in the, in the hinterland here in, in the uh, mountainous areas, which are quite bicarbonate and carbonate rich. It's quite normal. So every time you build mountains, you double rocks and you pull out uh, calcium carbonate or carbon dioxide, and you end up precipitating it, the bottom two photographs, as carbonate minerals. Every time you try to do a calculation on how long carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere, there are 23 ways of doing this. The IPCC uses one figure that says that it could be 50 to 200 years. All the other calculations show that it is about five years, which fits in with everything we know from geology. So why does the IPCC always have to take these extreme cases to frighten us witless? So we've got a lot of information on carbon dioxide, but we do not hear it in the public domain. Okay, well, in Calgary, you deal with a lot of carbon in rocks. These are ancient rocks with bacterial matter. Uh, these are rocks thousands of millions of years old, except for the bottom left, that's a, a coal deposit. We store huge amounts of carbon in sediments. We store huge amounts of carbon in limey rocks. And I'm just going through a run through time, going from the oldest stromatolite limestone rocks I, I've been to, and just going through that at all different geological time periods, we've stored carbon dioxide in rocks. Limestones contain 44% carbon dioxide. And here's the greatest climate change we've ever experienced. Some 700 million years ago, there were two, possibly four, periods of ice sheet expansion. And as the ice retreated, it left behind a, a tillite or till, which has now become a tillite. Now these rocks formed when we had a very high carbon dioxide content. How do I know that? Well, bottom photograph shows the tillite, stuff left behind by retreating ice, on top of that is a carbonate. That carbonate from various chemical fingerprints formed in water at about 40 degrees Celsius. There is no ocean today with a water temperature like that. That boundary represents a sea level change of only 1,500 metres. And if we want to work out what the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere was, we go to the hills. And these hills are composed of dolomite, a calcium magnesium carbonate. That only forms, from experimental work, we know that, it only forms when we've got a high carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere. So here we have the biggest ice age in the history of the planet, and it formed when there was high carbon dioxide. Something's wrong. But what I find fascinating about this ice age is when we say, well, I wonder how it formed. There's a really simple answer. 
We don't know. And if you don't know how the biggest climate change on Earth ever occurred, how the hell can you be so dogmatically certain about the slight perturbations in temperature we see today? And we see people having conniptions about barrier reefs and coral reefs dying due to ocean acidification. This barrier reef, 400 million years ago, formed when we had a much higher carbon dioxide content. It quite happily became extinct when we had a climate change. That's quite normal. And what was the change? It was cooling. It wasn't warming. And those rocks, as far as you can see, those outcrops contain 44% carbon dioxide. That is sequestration of carbon dioxide in rocks. We see the same in China. We see the same in much younger rocks. So when we go through time, if we look at what's happening in the oceans of recent times, we see these huge fluctuations in temperature. We see carbon dioxide, bottom right, tied up in shelves. So ever since the beginning of time, we've been leaking out carbon dioxide and we've been tying it up in sediments. We have equilibrium. And to argue that the traces of human CO2 going into the atmosphere are going to upset that equilibrium, the only time you can argue that is when you totally ignore the history of planet Earth and view long-term records of climate as being 50 or 100 years. I was at a conference in Cambridge on Tuesday where various groups of us took on the climate gate people who were arguing that the long-term record was 100 years old. Mind you, if you ask them for it, they can't reproduce it or give it to you. Now, a long term, it, look, it's like looking at, at the film Casablanca. There's a wonderful love scene in Casablanca. You look at that frame of Casablanca and you say, oh yeah, this film's about, it's a love film, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it out and look at it, it's good. It's not. And this is what the climate people are doing. They're looking at one frame in the whole movie of the history of the planet. And if you look at that one frame in the movie, you get it wrong. And they have. Because when you look at modern times, coral reefs are sequestering carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. We've got modern stromatolites. Bottom right are soils, which are pulling carbon dioxide, the white material, pulling that out of the atmosphere and putting it into soils. These processes started on that very first Thursday when planet Earth formed, 4,567 million years ago. And if you ignore all of that history, then you come up with the ridiculous conclusions that you've got. Now, where does carbon dioxide go? Forget the equations. It dissolves in the ocean. And it very much depends upon how much carbon dioxide is in the air as to what happens. But it goes into the oceans. It later can be degassed. It can be used by life. But what we see, and this is a repeat, is that over time, we see that carbon dioxide has gone down in the atmosphere. Why? Because it's gone into fossil fuels, it's gone into limestones, it's gone into life. That's been sequestered into rocks. And we are now living at a period of time when the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere is dangerously low. If we had it less than 200 parts per million by volume, it's currently 388 parts per million by volume, but if we had it as a really low carbon dioxide content, forget it, we wouldn't have any plant life. Time is ticking on, so we won't worry too much about that. And this is where it's been sequestered into. Into coals, into limestones, into all sorts of organic materials. So when you look at the carbon dioxide today, there's no point in getting into a lather about it. It's quite low. In the past, it's been much higher. There are other pollutants that kill you, but it's not carbon dioxide. So we have extremely good evidence that carbon dioxide is good for you. When we look over 